All right, so this is the first time um, well, it's the first time, the second time actually, that I uh, have not set my alarm for 3.30 in the morning since February. Um, I haven't been, I've always been putting on the snooze to about 7 or, uh, you know, sometimes 8, depending. So, um, this time I didn't put the alarm on, I got up at 7.30. Yesterday I got up at 5.30, but I was still sleeping. It's still... A very anxious day for me. Um, it's been over a week. I uh, let me put this on uh, the tripod. I um, have not written that much in my agenda of what to do. I'm trying to kind of disconnect a bit because it's really overwhelming, and I know what I need to do. So I'm kind of trying to be a little slacker on it just because it's really too much so i'm trying to kind of ease up on it for a bit so i can kind of get my mind straight yesterday was kind of cool because i went out for uh i won't get into too many details but when i came back i was able to work a little bit on some of my uh accounting stuff which i have to go back to do today so I have before I leave before I do some cardio and before I leave um, so it's a lot of things I need to do but trying to be able to focus on one at a time I have about five pages I need to read for one of my fitness certifications that I'm well uh, behind on and overdue but as I talked to you I felt I needed to talk because um, it's 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 getting too much in my head again. I was kind of cool yesterday, but it keeps coming back. Um, the anxiety that is. Um, so I figured I would talk, and I would do these dishes for my meal prep tomorrow. I have only one meal left, but I haven't eaten yet. I'm trying to ration. It's a day by day struggle. That's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Let me. Uh, Make some more tea. I've been having a chamomile tea for nighttime, so I'm always drinking tea now. Uh, so I don't have anything else in my mouth like food. Um, Yeah, so, if you've seen the video where I talked about the employee, I think I mentioned that. I titled it that, at least. Um, I haven't seen him for, like, I don't know, a week and a half, whatever. He called me, la he called me last Saturday when he was working, and I happened to be at my gym on Sunday training a client, and he was there. And he comes in all nice and stuff, because he's a charming person, right? That's the problem. So, blah, blah, blah. And then, he finally started talking, and he talks in the accusatory way, and he's like, um, so, do I still have the manager position? Which was, it wasn't even the manager position. I won't go into details as to the situation with him. But I'm doing him a lot of favors, as I stated in the last video. Um, but, I mean, I'm not happy with his... And I've given him, like, eight, nine months of, you know, trying for him to be straight, you know? So, <clears throat> I said, uh, no, it's between you and so-and-so. And so then he gets into a little sulky fit, because that's how he deals with his life. That's the whole main thing. It's like, it's, I'm realizing it's a really bad dynamic. Uh, worse than date, like dates I've been on, you know, people I've dated. So that's kind of what I, and I was kind of over it, you know what I mean? I'm get, it, it's getting better. Because the more I don't care, the better it is. He either needs the money and works, 
or he doesn't and he leaves. That's pretty much it. You have, have to be okay with him leaving because he's not benefiting the, the, the gym, right? So, um, and I've accepted that I have to, you know, train the other guy and that I can keep up with, with him with a text message. And he'll do a better job than this guy in certain things because the other guy didn't do anything, so. As long as there's some sort of communication, it's better than no communication, and me trying to run after the guy and give him fa do favors and stuff. Now, if he leaves, then I have to go and do, you know, uh, purchases and stuff, and I don't have a car, and I'll go buy a bus, which, you know, I did before I hired him. So, the point being is that there's a little unknown, because his communication is really bad, so I, I'm kind of indifferent now, and it's like, he says, um, I noticed that my, oh no, first he said, I noticed that my two hour little shifts at noon aren't there, and which he would never go to anyways, and he says, he's go I'm going there to make sales and stuff, and it's like, bitch, you're not making sales. You're just taking money and expecting to get uh, bonuses for, for sales that you didn't do. You know, uh, what I wanted him to do from the get-go was to go out and get people into the gym, which he wouldn't do. Because before I, I brought him in, I would say there wasn't, you know, there wasn't enough um, hours for him initially in August or something. And... So I would have him come with me and deliver flyers and stuff, and then he wouldn't show up. Because basically he wanted to just own the gym, and everyone re refers to him as the manager because he's there, he talks. It's for his ego, right? That's the whole thing. And now that I'm over that, that no, it's not about your ego, it's about helping the gym do well, and you're not doing a good job. So he's going to, you know, pull tantrums and stuff, and that... I mean, that's, that's what's getting to me, because I don't like that, and I usually, I want to help people, and, you know, so now I'm sticking more to my, my guns, and, like, I don't care if he leaves or not, but I still have to find someone else. But I don't think he's going to leave because he really needs the money. He's got five kids. Uh, I won't tell you his financial situation, um, but it's like, that's the way it is. He needs the smackdown, you know what I mean? It's not his gym, he's not investing anything, and he's not doing a good job. So anyway, so when you said to me, uh, um, can I just put my two hours back on? I said, well, you'll have to talk to so-and-so, he's in charge of that. You know, he's obviously feeling very uh, butthurt and his ego, his whole sense of being is down because of that. <clears throat> so... Um, as I was leaving, you know, and he had to make a shake, and he would be very sulky and silent, where he went from extremely outgoing, fake, I don't like that charming fakeness. Now that I see it for what it is, and now that I'm talking about it, it's like, you know, fuck him. You do your job, you do it well, and you don't try to get on my good side in a fake way. You do, you get on my good side by, by producing. I'm being genuine. And I know he needs the, the work, so I mean, he has to take what I, what I get. And if he can't communicate to me in a decent way with, then that's it, you know what I mean? Um, but still, there's still an unknown. He could just give up and say, F it, I'm not coming back. And tonight, like, he might not show up, so I don't know. There's always that unknown, but because he's, but he hasn't done that in the past. I mean, he's always found a replacement and all that, so. But there's always that unknown, because now he's like, he doesn't think he's the manager anymore, quote unquote. So it always bothers me. So it's, it's, it's creating some anxiety in me, again. I was good yesterday. So I gotta kinda deal with it. And that's the way it always is going to be when you own businesses. You're going to deal with a lot of stuff. 
so I'm trying to find a way to get my mind off it. And what happened yesterday is that I just actually went out and got laid. Uh, <laughs> but when I got home, I was like, oh, okay. And I could focus on the next thing. Like, it got my mind off it. So I always need to find ways to distract me, get my mind off, and then still have enough energy to do the next thing for a little bit. I went to bed later yesterday, which is why I didn't set the alarm. And I've been mean, I, I mean, if I'm setting the alarm for 3.30 and I'm waking up, get, you know, I've been forcing myself to do that. So I got to see what I can do. Something's not working, you know. So I have to modify some things, which is the way it always is. Okay, now I'm starting to feel a little, a twinge of more relaxation as I'm talking. Took a while. Talking gets it out, right? Um, and you might not understand what I'm saying. I mean, I'm kind of babbling. Let me get some of that I was watching a lot of videos yesterday. But I got back to the um, health monk. Modern day health monk, I think. And he had the same problem. He's a very workaholic. A lot of things he wants to do, and he had some health problems. I think he's like 28 or 32, I'm not sure. And now he's, he did a video where he was talking about to kind of do the things every day that make him feel good and motivate him. As opposed to things that, to just do things and not feel happy about it, you know? So I kind of took some information from that. Yeah, I have to put myself in the state where I want to do stuff, you know, and it, it always happens when I'm able to divert my attention and create that need that I want to do stuff, you know, so I feel happy doing stuff and that moving forward, you know, and it's a tough thing to do. And you do way too many things. You know. And it's like you're kind of stuck because a lot of things have to be done. And even then, not catching up with everything. But he was saying something about surrendering. Like, okay, some things I can't do. Okay. You can't change things to kind of surrender and say, okay, that's the way it is. The house is, the place is a mess, can't do this, can't do this. And I think that goes into my perfectionism, you know, to stop beating myself up. For the, the employee who's doing a bad job, he's got very good strong points, but it, he, you know, you have to accept the fact that he might leave, even though he has no other options. Literally, if you want to know what the situation is, you can talk on the phone. You can call me. I'm not going to mention anything in comments. I'm going to only mention on the phone, you know, what the situation is. I have no problem talking about it. I just won't do it online. Um, and I will talk, do talk about it to my therapist, which I'm going to see tomorrow. Um, okay, so I got a little bit done, now I got to put in for this, keep it moving, you know what I mean, I'm going to keep it going, usually I put it in like so, I'm actually going to try to do it quickly, sometimes you have to apply shortcuts, stop being so perfectionist that it has to soak, as it is, let's do it, it needs to be done. I'm talking to myself here. 
but um, what was I saying? My therapist. Oh yeah, I had. Uh, if you don't know, I'm taking drawing classes. It used to be on Tuesdays. Now I'm going on Saturdays because I couldn't make it to the Tuesdays without being tired on Wednesdays. I might do it again if I um, don't put on my alarm clock like I'm doing now. So you can see I'm in a transition again. There's always a transition. Always. And uh, Um, so I haven't been drawing at home at all, and that my, my, that's my goal, I wasn't supposed to practice at home, I wanted to practice there, and I'm getting better, and the teacher kind of threw in, you know, if you just practice once, you start to get better, because it's a, it's a skill, so I'm like, I need to, I love drawing, I'm like doing it and I'm liking it. But it is taxing, especially when you're doing realism. You know, drawing human figures and stuff. And it's a skill, you know, to know the proportions, to draw precise lines as opposed to very sketchy lines and not knowing what you do. It's like working out, you know, you do it a bit and your muscles have a little memory and then you figure out what to do. So. Maybe I might go in tomorrow. We'll see. We will see. No stress. That's the thing. No stress. It's the hardest thing. All right. I think with that being said, I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to upload this. And, uh...